Hey guys, welcome to Moving On TV. This is the Awakening 133, and um, I haven't done anything since Sunday, except I've had a massive breakdown yesterday, which I'm glad to say I'm now balanced, no medication, obviously. Um, but I had a really, really difficult one, and that was connected to uh, people trying to break in. Long story. Uh, I'm not going to go into it. And so today I want to talk about, I want to tell you how I came back into balance because um, I was gone, panicking all over the place, couldn't function, didn't know what to do because I've got the eviction coming up. But thank God, after I did what I did, I was able to get some better results and so it's true what they say that when you come back into balance that's when you can go out and you can get the results you can get the better answers and things come to you to help you okay so i'm going to teach you today a balancing technique now i tested it yesterday i've tested it a lot of times when i left therapeutic community but i forgot about it over the years and I haven't done it for a while. It's a com combination of two separate techniques that I've learned that are out there, but I've brought them into one and they do work for me every single time. Um, I've tried tapping, but it didn't help, but this seems to work very quickly. Um, and also sleep, sleep is very important. So if you were deprived like me, you weren't sleeping, so it's not going to help your mental health. So basically, um, yesterday I was, I was doing this technique and then I did some meditation and slept and then somebody rang me and triggered me very quickly uh, into fear. I got triggered very quickly into the fear of the eviction. What are you going to do? Yada, yada. Went right back there again. So I did the technique again, fell asleep and... All through the night, I meditated, slept, meditated, fell asleep, meditated, did this technique, fell asleep, and kept doing it. And when I woke up in the morning, total peace. And I've had a beautiful day today. I've been in nature most of the day. I went to church. I sat and I lit a candle and I prayed. I did the Lord's Prayer and I asked for peace for everyone. I ask for forgiveness from everyone that I have hurt. And I worked on my shortcoming, my big shortcoming, which is my temper, the temper, not mine, the temper. And the fact that I don't seem to have a shock absorber that goes, I get panicky and frightened, and then I go straight into rage. I lose my temper. So what happens in between? And that's what I want to talk about as well, because that's my biggest shortcoming, the biggest shortcoming that Lauren, the personality, has, the child that jumps too quickly. And everyone who I've lost this year in particular or over the years um, has been because I didn't have that shock absorber. I don't seem to have it. And I don't understand what it is between the panic and the fear I have a knee-jerk reaction, which is either lose my temper or something happens very quickly, boom. And there's nothing in between that panic and the temper or that panic and doing something I regret. So yesterday, because I was in so much panic, I sent an email to someone and it wasn't what I wanted, the result, and I'm not sure that, but it was a learning experience. And it, made, it brought me to my knees to understand that I have to develop a shock absorber. The shock absorber has got to be something like the 12 steps. And the first step is I can't control my temper. I can't control the fear and the panic sometimes. 
So the next step is, I, I came to believe a power greater than myself will help restore me to sanity. So, okay, so I, I've got that. But then the big one is before I lose the temper, before you lose your temper, before you send that email, you handed over, came to, um, made a conscious decision to hand it over to my higher power. Now I know what's wrong with me, that that shock absorber is missing. Now, I've asked people to forgive me, and a lot of people haven't. Some have. And we talk about it, and they said, well, you're Lawrence, so we see you black and white and green and grey. But some people don't because it's a shock. They go into shock or whatever. And I've seen this over the years, and they're not able to accept me back into their lives. And so I have to take responsibility now. Yesterday was rock bottom, and it was a very dangerous situation for me. And so now that's it. So do you have that shock absorber? And if you do, can you teach me? Because I'd be very grateful if you could send me also some information of how you not medication, and believe me, it's too quick. It's so quick that it's got to be, uh, like I get up in the morning and I say to something, if I get into panic, then I hand it over to you. Or I do something quick, like I take this box and I say, right, in you go. It's got to be that quick. And it's got to be a pause between the panic and the fear and the tempo loss. So I don't know about you, but I'm only starting to understand that now. And I must admit in the therapeutic community, I've worked on what takes me into fear. What happens before I go into fear? And that is usually helplessness, confusion, helplessness, vulnerability, then I go into the fear and panic. But I never worked on what comes between the panic and losing the temper, which manifests the loss of a friend or, or, any, or, or a situation that could have been beneficial, maybe. Okay? So that's got to be worked on now. Okay? So that shock absorber, that's what I'm going to be trying to understand today. So... Yesterday, I was able to work on the panic, the triggers, and not go and do anything else. It was like I could stop, let the panic come up and feel it, but do this technique, which is just breathing, the violet flame, and the healing codes all in one package. Now, I use this, I'll never forget it, because I came out of the therapeutic community, and I didn't have that cushion of the 24 hours support. I didn't have anything and I was in inner peace. But then of course life went on and I got scared and I'll never forget it. Um, I, I, found, I found the healing code by Alex Lloyd in the Seekers Trust, which is an angel center. And I was going into fear and I thought I'm going to use, it. I'm gonna try this. So it said, use a positive affirmation while you do it, okay? And I thought I'll use the violet flame meditation and let's see what happens. And so this is what you do. So you're in panic. So I was up there in the Richter of number 10. I remember very, very high up in panic. And I thought, okay, I'm going to do it in this moment. And this is what I did. First of all, you put your hands here by the throat chakra and you can feel the pull. Okay. By around the larynx, you can feel it. And you say, I am a being of violet fire. I am the purity God desires. You could say the Lord's Prayer. Sometimes I would see myself sitting in Yundan Valley, which is beautiful where I went today. You can do that if you're very visual. It depends. It, different things work, but it always works for me. And then you put your hands here by the jawline. And you will feel the pull. I am a being of violet fire. I am the purity God desires. And then the temples. 
I am a being of all of fire. I am the purity God desires. And then here, the third eye, I am a being of all of fire. I am the purity God desires. And then you do it another, you keep doing it. I am a being of all of fire. I am the purity God desires. I am a being of all of fire. I am purity God desires. I am a being of all of fire. Purity God desires. I am a being of all of fire. I am the purity God desires. I am a being of all of fire. I am the purity God desires. I am a being of all of fire. I am the purity God desires. I am a being of all of fire. I am the purity God desires. I am a being of all of fire. I am the purity God desires. You take a breath and you release the aura. You push away your aura so it grows. I am a being of life. I am the purity God desires. And, and you should start to see the violet flame. I always do. It starts to come in. I am a being of life. I am the purity God desires. So the charge of whatever was bothering you is going. It's going. If it isn't, let me know and I'll work with you. Because then I come back and I say, okay, on a scale of one to 10, Lauren, how upset are you? And it's always gone down to about six, five, and then I'll do it again. Or I will close my eyes and imagine I'm in Yundin Valley and I will really visualize me sitting there. I'll feel myself, do all the modalities. I can feel the grass. I can feel it. I can feel the wind on my face. And then I move to the next one, Yundin Valley. Yundin. Yundin, okay? And then you do, this is, as I say, I designed this myself. You push the aura away. I don't know why, but I seem to do this and it helps. There are other techniques you can do, um, which um, they teach, which is just also you add, <laughs> you, you, you move the crown chakra clockwise put your hand on your solar plexus and push it in <laughs> come back into balance and I can assure you that the panic will have gone down, the situation will have been, will have gone in further away from you, and you will feel that you're in the violet flame more, or you're in Yundan. So that's the first thing I wanted to teach you today, is to use that as a shock absorber between the panic and losing it. And I didn't do that, but I am now. I am now, except the situation was had taken me back too quickly to PTSD. It was people banging on the door trying to break in and because someone did something which I'm not going to go into. Nothing, it wasn't actually to do with me this time. I was definitely an innocent victim. I know I always say that, but I was in this situation. And it put me into a situation of total panic very quickly. And, you know, I couldn't have really done enough of that. But after it happened, I could have done the, that process, that shock absorber, let's call it. Or I could have called Unity Prayer Line, but I did something first. And then the common sense came back in. So my job now is another situation I was in uh, where I lost, I started to shout in front of a child and we'd scared the child. And because that shock absorber wasn't there. So now I know I've got to use that shock absorber before I shout, you know? And, and so I'm learning and I'm asking people to forgive me because I'm learning all the time. Like everybody else, I'm human, I'm going through a lot. We're all going through hell at the moment and huge panic and fear over the eviction. So there are ways to get over the panic. So I'm going to say that you need to make sure you sleep 
don't get too hungry, too angry, too lonely, too tired. And I had not slept, God knows since when. Okay, so I went to bed and I meditated and slept and meditated and slept. There's a wonderful app you can get called Envision. It's got beautiful meditations on there, 10 minutes. And it helped me to get, because my mind was all over the place. I couldn't just breathe and get myself. I did this process and it brought me into focus. And so I'm able to function again. So that's it for today. A nice little technique to help bring you back into, I'm calling it the shock absorber because we're all in shock. And the more we practice it, the more we'll get to a level. But the most important thing is you have to keep reciting, even when you're not in panic, that you can, you're going to hand everything over to your higher power. So every time someone upsets you, whether it's a course in miracles, and I can choose peace instead of this, as Wayne Dyer would say, I can choose peace, I can choose peace. So every time you get to a panic, you just keep saying, I can choose peace, I can choose peace. So you're not likely to do a knee-jerk reaction email or something or shout. You're more likely to stay in balance or to get out of the situation. But we are learning. It's, you know, we are, we're going through a process of learning. And this is ascension. And yes, you're going to hurt people and people won't accept you because I think when they see someone emoting or losing their temper, it could be that they can't and they're jealous or it could be that they can't deal with any kind of noise and so they push you away or it could be they're too black and white. And I was talking to someone about this today, a friend. It's all about finding the bit in the middle human beings are either not black and not white. They're in the middle somewhere, you know? And it's kind of like, if someone has upset you, can you think of the good things about that person too? Because usually there's lots of good stuff. It's very rare in my life that I don't meet up again with friends and we discuss what happened and we're able to take responsibility for our side because we're all going through hell on and off at the moment. Very rare. I mean, I think it's happened to me once. Um, in, in the last 30 years, it's happened to me twice that I never saw that person again, twice. Um, because they could not see my point of view at all. They, they could not understand the stress and the eviction and everything that I was going through as well. But most times, and this is what the conversation was today with my friend, where we'd fallen out in a big way, was that he was able to see the good side of me. And he said, well, because you've got good points and you're human, Lauren, that's why we're friends, because you're not all dark <laughs> or all good or all whatever. You know, and you teach me things as well. He said, you, you teach me and you were able to show me the things that I needed to work on. So I know I've got a problem with this temper, not me, the personality, the fetus that I'm healing, as you know, or the seven-year-old that, that was taken to Israel. That is no excuse. And I'm working on it. And it's a work in progress. So I'm giving you this gift today. Namaste. And I hope you enjoy it. And tomorrow we've got MOTV Jukebox. I've got loads of new songwriters. It's going to be very exciting. Uh, seven till nine, uh, sorry, five till seven and nine till 11. I will be doing MOTV Jukebox with lots of great new songwriters, uh, like DJing. And that's going to be fun. I think someone's working on a jingle for me. That's going to be exciting. And on Friday, I'm doing free tarot. And that will go from 8 till 11. So come on and get your free tarot reading. My pleasure. I love it. I've got life. Um, probably be one day. 
either Saturday or Sunday because it exhausted me and um, I was ill afterwards, I lost my voice. So I don't know what will happen by the weekend, um, we'll see. But send me your videos because now I can play videos, which is really exciting. So I took some time off, um, a lot of meditation and nature. Every day I'm going into nature. And as I say, I went to the church today. It was something beautiful I picked up and it was a child's poem. It was beautiful. I'm going to kind of end on that. It was God, let me hear you in the trees and the birds and in the joy of um, the, the waves, I think. Let me hear the joy in the birds and let me feel the beauty of nature in the waves and uh, the buzzing of the bees today. It was from the point of view of a child uh, and the, the squeaking and squawking of, of, of the birds or something like that. And, and that's what I did today. I went to Ewenden and after I came out of the church, I had an interesting conversation with the uh, priest because as I never wear masks and people were going in with masks and I went up to her and I said to her, the vicar or whoever she was, I think it was a vicar, but I don't know, was a woman, uh, like the vicar of Dibley. And I said to her, um, do you, obviously you know what Revelations is. I said, I'm one of the 144,000. And I said, the reason I don't wear a mask is be not because I'm trying to upset anyone and not because I'm a bad person, like people think that I'm trying to make them ill or I don't respect them. It's not that, it's that I am not scared of this at all and never have been, I never will, because I know deep down inside that this is not serious it never has been because i'm one of the 144,000 that was sent here and i know how to heal my body and i know how to heal mental health issues most of the time except sometimes the personality gets in the way and i kind of I said i'm an earth angel and i'm here to do a job and so please understand that I'm not a bad person because I'm walking around without a mask. And she just looked at me and smiled. And I said to her, one thing you need to know is the media is not God. And in the next few weeks, everything's going to come to the surface and you will know the truth about everything. And she, she took it on board. She said, thank you. And I felt good and I felt well done, Lauren, yeah. I know why I'm here. That's what MOTV Jukebox is. It's songwriters that nobody even listened to. Uh, it's my job to be the patron saint or the angel of lost dreams and talents. And so you come to me to Moving On TV and I provide the platform and we do it together. I love you lots. Take care, have a beautiful day. And again, from the heart, if I've upset anyone because I didn't have that shock absorber, which I'm trying to learn, it's a work in progress. I'm asking for forgiveness. I'm asking for anyone who I've hurt to forgive me from the heart. We all learn at our own pace and level. And my intention is not to upset or scare anybody or hurt them. The personality goes into fight and flight, I expect, because of the way I grew up. And so sometimes it takes a while for me to be able to understand what I'm doing, because it's so natural to go into fight and flight. And that's not the shock absorber I want anymore, because it upsets people and I lose people in my life that I care about. That's all I can say from the heart. I'm trying to say that I'm learning. It, it is, it's a process. And I came out again out of huge panic. I mean, as Unity Pearline, I was all over the place and they prayed with me and I didn't know what to do with myself. 
but I came out of it, thank God. I ate, I did hold. <laughs> Don't get too hungry, too angry. Well, I was too lonely. I called people. I even called the Samaritans yesterday and they were beautiful. They told me to breathe and cry. And I cried a lot. I'm tired. I went to bed about eight o'clock, I think, last night. Cuddled up to the cats or Ellie, wherever. And um, got a box of chocolates. Didn't eat them, but they're there. I thought, whatever. Get my goodies, you know, I need something <laughs> after eight minutes. And that was it. So um, I'm doing my best, learning my lessons. And if you know a beautiful landlord who will take me and the cats and give us a beautiful home, peaceful home, warm home, no implements and believes in what we believe in, totally enlightened and will also charge half of the rent that I'm paying here for one bedroom, which is disgusting what we pay. <laughs> I hear it's coming soon. Love you lots and just please pray for me to find a home for me and the cats, okay? I love you lots. Bye.